Here's the average game developer salary in the US. If you've been wanting to learn some sort of programming field, or even if you haven't, then you should still watch this video for the aforementioned reasons, and just because it's a respectable position that opens a lot of doors. You can start your journey right here, right now. Go to GodotEngine.org and download Godot. For this, I am going to be sticking with Godot 3 as it's more established, but there are plenty of tutorials for Godot 4 as well. Downloading this takes less than 100 megabytes, so there's practically no commitment to this. The downloaded folder contains an executable file, so by the time you start wondering if you should do this or not, you're already in. This is Godot. Not really. This is just a project manager. First you have to make a project. Use these settings, select a good folder path, and hit the new folder button. Confirm your project and boom, you've made it further than about 90% of your peers. Here's the full Godot editor. Most of this is pretty boring to cover and out of the scope of this video, but you'll learn it all later on. Go to the left and hit add other node. Type in sprite and add it. A sprite is just an object, or a node, with a picture. Currently there is no picture, so we can give it one by modifying its texture property. Take the icon.png in the bottom left and drag it into the texture property. Now we have a scene with a sprite. Using this icon as its texture, use Control S to save the scene. This may be a lot to take in, but once you do it a few times, it'll all make sense. Now right click on the sprite and hit attach script. Hit create. Now we can add a few lines of code to make it move. The code I will use is in the description, so you can just get rid of all this and paste what I have into here, or you can follow along. First, take all this useless code and get rid of it, except for that first line. This line gives us access to code used by the sprite. Go a few lines down and type in func process delta, just like this. That's a lot of extra symbols, but you will understand what they all mean eventually. What this is ultimately doing is creating a new function, or a group of code that all runs at once. We use the name of a special function that keeps running every frame. Hit enter and go one line down, and you should be tabbed in one space already. Type if input dot is action pressed UI write, then add a colon to finish the statement, just like this. This is also a lot of symbols, but when we run the game, what it's really doing is just asking Godot if a certain key is being pressed. You can check the input map and see that UI write is a default action mapped to the right arrow key. This ultimately means that if the right arrow key is being pressed, then whatever code we put next will run. Hit enter once more and type position.x plus equals 5. What this is doing is taking the horizontal position of the sprite and adding 5 to it. This will run only if the right arrow key is pressed on a given frame. To test this out, we can hit the play button. When it prompts you if you want to make the main scene the current scene, hit yes. Now hold down on the right arrow key. Watch as the sprite moves off of the right edge of the screen. This is a silly little animation, but it's code that you implemented in just 4 minutes. You've created a moving animation on a screen using an official game editor and code. Think about what more you can do if you add a few more lines of code to the script. Close the window that you have opened and underline the if statement with its respective code. Copy it and paste it 3 times, being sure to get the indentation correct. Now change the following lines so they look like this. What we've done is made the sprite move in the appropriate directions if the up, down, and left arrow keys are pressed as well. Try running the scene again. What you'll find is that you can now move the sprite everywhere using the arrow keys. Kinda cool, huh? Anyways, that's all I have for you here. If you don't like what you've just done, then you can move on with your life and no harm done. If you do think programming is kinda cool, then you can check out this video right here for more. This will set you on the right path for a more solid start, teaching you much more. From there, you can start creating your own small project ideas and looking up tutorials on how to create some of the mechanics for it. Then in some time you'll have a good enough understanding to make pretty much anything you want and create some larger projects. At that point you can switch over to web development, low level systems programming, or software engineering as they're all related programming fields. Pretty soon you'll be so good at this you can take over the world or maybe just get a head start on a career or something. Check the pinned comment for more information. Bye bye.